Good morning. This is Sunny Harris. We're going to talk today about maximizing profits with moving averages. Hang on one second. Of course, we have the important disclaimer. I am not trying to tell you to trade. Uh, you should only trade with money you can afford to lose. It's a dangerous business. So please read this disclaimer thoroughly. This is my website, moneymentor.com. I thought I'd show you that first. I have everything you can imagine that you might need as a trader on there. I also have started a new podcast. You can go to moneymentor.com slash podcast to link to it. It's on Spotify. And... It's uh, Sam Tennis and I are doing it together. Sam Tennis is of Ask Mr. Easy Language fame, and he and I are almost done writing a book together called Easy Language OOEL Made Easy. The purpose of the podcast is to bring famous traders, authors, and gurus to you so that you can get to know them. I'm a professional trader, mathematician, and programmer, and Sam is a professional programmer. He's known worldwide as the easy language expert. If you have any questions or programming you need done, get in touch with Sam. Uh, we've got everybody we can think of coming to the podcast for interviews. We wanna know what's behind the people who write the trading books and the indicators and system. Did you ever wonder if they really make money trading? Well, we're gonna ask them difficult questions about their lives, their ideas, and what they think of the markets. Episode number two, which we will record this Saturday, is featuring Tim Slater of CompuTrack and Tag Seminars Bank. So if you would please tell all your trading buddies. If we get a big enough following, we'll continue to do this for a long, long time. First, I'm gonna show you two of my indicators and then we will go through uh, developing indicators with moving averages and I'll show you why. I use this, this is my dynamic moving average. And if you're used to moving averages, you can see that this thing crosses over infrequently. So it only, it only responds to real moves. This is Ethereum. And you can see that it went short right here and is still short. The purple line stayed on top that whole time. So it's still short. These are my sunny bands, which are two bands, two average, two range bands around my dynamic moving average. And this is how I trade is with sunny bands. Today, we will compare and contrast simple moving averages, exponential moving averages, Bollinger bands, Keltner channels, and my sunny bands. And we're gonna find out where the profits are. I've been trading for 41 years and I've developed, researched and developed uh, many strategies, both for myself and for clients. Several clients have paid me up to $50,000 to develop a strategy, but others pay as little as $19.95. But more important than developing the strategies, I've developed testing methodologies that have stood the test of time and become the de facto standard in the trading community. In this webinar, I'm gonna share some of my more profitable trading concepts and at the end, some of my proprietary trading indicators. So I have three degrees in mathematics. I also have one in photography and film. I've been trading since 1981 full time. Twice I've been rated number one trader uh, by Stark Research, not trading options. I've been programming and testing since I started and teaching others to trade since uh, 1986. I'm not just a programmer, however, I'm a full-time trader who also programs. So I charge more than other people because I'm not just a programmer. I can tell you what work doesn't and help you develop profitable systems. Here are the books that I've written. Trading 101, Trading 102, Electronic Day Trading 101, Getting Started in Trading, Trade Station Made Easy. And now I'm writing Easy Language Object Oriented Programming Made Easy. 
Uh, after that, I'm going to finish grading the gurus. And here are the books. <clears throat> Ah, uh, list of appearances. If you want to see where all the talks that I've given and recordings of them, you can go to moneymentor.com and click on uh, about and then pull down to appearances. You'll see, oh, they go back for a long time. So now we're going to talk about how to make money trading. The steps that you need to take, the indicators that are profitable, the strategy, the development, and setting your goals. Not everyone can trade the same system. What's good for the goose is not necessarily good for the gander. I like one minute bars and you might like daily bars. You might not wanna sit in front of a computer all day like I do, but your system must be configured for your personality. You won't trade something that somebody else develops uh, that doesn't fit you. Uh, some of my people like to trade for an hour a day or two hours a day or only trade the open or only trade the close. Uh, I like to be involved in the middle of the activity. So uh, you, might, you might not want to do what I do, but I can develop any kind of trading strategy for you. Bonds have a rhythm of 45 minute swings and the S&P has a rhythm of 15 minutes, currency swing on a daily chart, stocks swing on daily charts, and mutual funds swing on weekly charts. So you have to know the rhythm of what you're trading and choose the right time frame. Here's a, a cycle put on the Ethereum chart. This is a daily chart and you can see how the cycles fit right in there. So if you put your cycles on, you can get, do a really good job of catching highs and lows. Here it is on the SPY, the uh, S&P 500 ETF. Same idea, but different cycles. And you, here again are the bonds on a different cycle. You see that's smaller than uh, the other cycle that we just saw. Also, it's a matter of finding the right symbol to trade. You don't get to tell the market what you want it to trade. You let the market tell you where the money is. So you start by screening the larger markets like the Dow or the NASDAQ or the S&P or the Russell. Um, if anybody wants a symbol list for the Russell, it's not on TradeStation, I'd be happy to send it to you. Just contact me at sunny at and I'll send you the, the list. And I'll even tell you how to import it into TradeStation. So at the same time you query the, the universe of symbols, you must keep in mind still your time frame. At the same time you consider your time frame, you've got to consider your own personality. Oh, and here's where I say that. Uh, I have clients who want only to trade in the first two hours, who want to trade for the close, who, who want to place a trade and walk away. I have several of those clients. And I do have clients who do mutual fund switching. <clears throat> Uh, just as an aside, I got an email yesterday from a client that said, thank you so much for all your help. I'm up $148,000 for this year so far. That's not bad in two and a half months. So you've got to consider time frame. All these things have to be considered at once. Uh, you've got to pay attention to a lot of things to be a good trader. So you want to consider time frame, your time constraints, the universe of symbols, and you have to ask yourself, where's the money? Where is the action? And what is true? That's the most important question I have in my own trading and in my teaching. You've got to ask what is true of the, mark, of the chart that you're looking at. And I can show you how to do that and find what is true in, towards the end of this presentation. I have a scan that I run to find bullish stocks. So you can see, and this is uh, three moving averages, 20, 50, and 200 day. And you can see when I run this scan, that lots of them are true. Lots of them are above all three averages still at this point with the market going down. We're gonna look at this one because it's number one on the list, ACHC. I don't even know what that is, but we're gonna take a look at it for a minute. 
So here's the moving average three lines. You see the number is 200, the blue one is the 20, and the gold one is the 50. So you can see that this stock, this is yesterday's chart. So this stock as of yesterday is above all three. Here's a standard moving average. Standard inputs are nine and 18. This is available on TradeStation or anything else. This is just a standard moving average. The problem, and I'm gonna show you that, is it crosses over, crosses over, crosses over, crosses over, crosses over. And during any sideways movement, it crop here again, crosses over, crosses over again. You know, so it's, it's constantly whipsawing. And I found out early in my trading career that whipsaw kills you. I mean, you can catch a beautiful trend like this one at the end here, or like this one going down, or this one going down. And then the sideways periods whipsaw and you lose all your profits. So I'm gonna show you how to avoid that. This is, uh, next chart is of price crossing move, moving average, not, not moving average crossing over itself, but rather price crossing over moving average. And here we can see what uh, the uh, signals come out like, and you can see this red dotted line down here is a loss, a loss, a loss, a loss, a loss. There's one win right there, and here we go loss again. There's a win, and then it doesn't have it till the end, because that's not a close out trade yet. But you can see easily that that's not gonna be something that, move, that makes you money. So you wanna test something else, or you wanna optimize the inputs to this to come up with something that works better. Here's the equity curve for that. So you can see, and this, this particular symbol is flat on everything up to about this point. And I don't understand why that is at this point, but uh, I think it might be because the chart was hardly moving back there. Now we optimize the inputs for that. And you can see again, crossover here's, here, oh, this one's the optimized, sorry. This one is the optimized crossover. It's not price moving over, but the, in, the moving averages crossing each other. So every time you get a crossover, you get a, a signal. There's the performance for that one. Now that's not too bad. Again, we have to ignore this beginning part, but that's not too bad. So that's an optimized moving average. Here's the exponential moving average, which a lot of people use. And in fact, they're used in Bollinger Bands and uh, Keltner channels. So here we can see again, red, here's the cyan one, so that's profit. Red, 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 red. So even the best one makes all of its money on this last move right here. Here's uh, the performance report for that. And you can see that's not so good either. Here I've optimized the same moving average crossover, the exponential moving average. And again, lots and lots of red. And there's the performance for that one, which is half of the performance for the other one that we just looked at. But um, it's better in the end of the chart, $5,000 versus 10,000 on the other one. Here we have Bollinger Bands, which are very popular. And uh, he uses an exponential moving average in the center. This midline is an exponential moving average. And he plots standard deviations on either side of the exponential moving average. So let's look at the Bollinger Band strategy and see what we get. So there we have lots of cyan. See, lots of cyan on that one. And the performance report shows us a lot of underwater. So when you look at it, yes, it's profitable because right out here, that last trade was profitable. It made $500. These are Keltner channels, moving average and average true ranges on either side. Much like my sunny bands, I use average true ranges on either side of the dynamic moving average. The difference is my dynamic moving average was it's some heavy mathematics that I created many years ago to get rid of whipsaw. So my dynamic moving average will eliminate the whipsaw that you see in almost everything else. 
here we have, we put the strategy on the Kellner channels, we can see that it's got lots of red again. And the performance report shows us, oh, that's down almost $3,000. <clears throat> Again, here's my dynamic moving average. And you can see that it's, it's smooth in its motion. Gold stays on top all the way up to here. So we can see this long teal line from there to there. We got the short on the, the COVID drop. I would have, I'll show you in a minute why I would have gotten out down here. And there's the equity for that one. That looks a little bit better. So here's why, this is Tesla, so it doesn't show the same chart, but uh, I, what I do with these sunny bands is I ride them from the top of the band to the bottom of the band, top of the band, bottom of the band, back up again to the top, back down to the bottom. These yellow dots are what I use to tell me what is true. This is my PHW or potential hourly wage indicator. And it shows me the ideal tops and bottoms. And when I use it on radar screen, which is a, like a spreadsheet in TradeStation, um, it shows me all the stocks that I wanna put in the list and what the PHW is. And I choose to trade the stocks with the highest PHW because they're the most tradable. And it will show me what the buy and hold profit is and what the net profit is and the ideal profit, all those sort of things. Here's Sunny Bands versus Kellner Channels. Yeah, they're similar. But Sunny Bands is based on my dynamic moving average, which, as I said, avoids whipsaw. Kellner channels are based on exponential moving average, and by their very nature, they have a lot of whipsaw. They're not smooth. Trading Kellner channels involves a lot of risk. This one's an interesting one. This is my Sunny Bars. And you can see here, see, look at the volume on this bar and see how fat that candle is. Next volume is still high, it's a little less fat. Here's a thinner one, but still heavy volume. Here's a normal volume, right? So it measures the average volume and plots the thickness of the bar based on the volume. That makes It's easier for me to read than it is to read this chart down here. I look back and forth. All of the indicators that I have are developed for my own trading. Yes, I also sell them, but they were developed for my own trading because I, I like things that are in color. I like things that show me quickly on the chart, uh, the answer, so I don't have to think while I'm trading. I do trade a five minute chart and a one minute chart uh, every day. And you can't look at a one minute or a five minute chart and, trying to, and be trying to decipher everything else that's happened on the chart. So that's why I make things colorful. So ABA, always be asking, what is true? Remember those yellow dots I showed you on the PHW? That's what is true. What's happening in the market? You want to know that. And how far is the current market moving? Now, I don't have a chart of the current market up right at the moment because I'm doing this presentation, but uh, we've been in some really volatile times since February 24th when Russia invaded Ukraine. I talked to a woman yesterday in Ukraine. Uh, actually, she was in Poland. She had just gotten over the border. Uh, so it, it's a serious situation there. Uh, say a prayer for Ukraine. So what happens when the band is touched? Do we want to ask that question? And what happens if the DMA is moving sideways? Now, that's, a, to me, a really important question. Whenever the DMA moves sideways, I know that um, it's, congestion. I don't want to trade when it's flat. So I use that DMA to tell me when to stay out of the market. You want to ask yourself what happens if the 15 minute signaling short and the one minute signals long or daily and weekly, however you'd like to look at those two different time frames. So if there's only a dollar, take it. Don't try to tell the market where to go. Go. So what's the difference? What's the diff? Here, we'll look at sunny bands again. And you can see right here, there's a little DIFF equals 0 
that tells me that the difference between the upper band and the lower band is not quite a dollar. So you see it goes, it's a, it's a magenta cal, uh, it's a magenta candle right here and a green candle up there. So you, when it goes under and then back over again, I go long. When it's up to the sunny band, I take the profit. Right there, it's the diff. So we read the sunny band's values from the right hand edge. And you can see here, they tell you, and again, color coded. You can see this is green because that line's green. This is teal because that line's teal. It tells me that the crossover was gold on top. It tells me the price. It gives me the midline, which is the average of the, these two lines. So I know that that midline on this chart is at 140. It tells me that the difference between the inner bands is 0.2. The difference with the outer bands is 0.3. It gives me the location of all the bands and it tells me really importantly that the angle is 0 0.24. So you can see right here, the angle in degrees of this little line segment right here is flat. So we don't wanna do anything when it's flat. But, um, we, I, I stay with the prior position and just wait. It, I would not take a trade that was signaled in the middle of the bands like that. Here we have sunny bands on different time frames. There's a one minute chart. And again, I've got colors showing me something. Green and red candles are the day session, right? And when it gets to the overnight session, they turn magenta and cyan or whatever colors you wanna set up. You can customize the colors, of course, but it lets me know what the evening session is. I trade differently in the evening session from the day session. As you can see, we've got a nice trend in the day session and a nice flat segment in the night session in this point. Not so true last night, but many nights it's, it's just flat, at least until 3 a.m. my time. I'm in California, and at 3 a.m. my time, the market starts moving. That would be, what would 3 a.m. in my time would be in London? So eight hours more to London. So that's why they're trading and they start moving the market. Here we have a five minute chart of the sunny bands, same idea. And you can see here it goes down, back up to the sunny bands. As long as it's with, uh, within this, we're not gonna trade it. it. Comes down to the midline, we're still not gonna trade it. So we'll be long that whole time. And on the 15 minute chart, same idea, night session, day session. And you can see why I would have stayed long during this whole period, because on a 15 minute chart, it's between the upper outer band and the inner band. Here we have a 30 minute, same idea. It works on any time frame, any symbol. So I use these sunny bands religiously to tell me when to trade. You can also use the dynamic moving average by itself, go short there, and when it crosses over to gold, go long there. That makes it really simple. So I do take my signals from the longer and the entry from the shorter time frame. So there's a 15 minute chart and there's the one minute chart. So I'm looking at this for my entry. I'm looking at the longer term chart for the direction. Here's a, an interesting chart. I can put two sets of sunny bands. This is a one minute chart and a five minute chart overlaid. And I can put the inner sunny bands with the dark green, darker colors, is the one minute and the lighter green and lighter teal, the cyan is the same information, but on the five minute chart. And I find that sunny bands go up, the, the inner sunny bands go up and touch the outer sunny bands. So we're trading up, up, up. And once it hits that outer band, I use that just like I would use price. And I watch it come back down. Notice it hasn't come down to the five minute lower bands. So that's, that's a signal that I don't go short yet because I watch the bands move the bands back and forth. It's a beautiful rhythm. Oh, and I can show you, on this one, I can show you how to do that. Uh, if you want to give me a call, uh, I do give trials of my indicator, seven day trials for free. And there's a YouTube video on my YouTube channel that shows you how to do that as well. So what are my rules? I take my setup from the 15 and 30 minute charts. I take the entries on the one and five minute charts. 
So I enter long when the long term charts the red slash magenta and below the lower sunny band, and the short term charts also red and below the lower sunny band. I take profit when an attractor is reached. Now I haven't explained attractor yet, but in effect, I look for reversion to the mean on all kinds of things. I draw horizontal lines at the preponderance of price. So if, if price has been hit over and over, I draw a horizontal line there and I call that an attractor. I also call the upper and outer, upper inner and upper outer sunny bands attractors because price tends to be attracted to that. On the long-term chart, the uh, price is, the, the sunny band is penetrated upward and then back downward on a red bar, I go short or take profit if I'm if it's sideways, I'll take profit there. When the DMA, dynamic moving average, is long, the bias is to the upside. Therefore, I don't expect a short trade to drop further than the midline. So you wanna look at the midline, which it prints out on the sunny bands. And you wanna look at the DMA to see whether gold is on top or purple is on top. If the DMA is Flat, stay with the first entry on the flat period until the DMA finds the direction. These are all my rules. If I got a short signal, which would be a blue or green candle going up, and if it turns red below the band, then I'm going short. And if the blue to green continues on up, I reverse and go long. This will likely be a very strong move because uh, once it moves back from not going not going any further than the midline. If it moves back again, it's always a strong move. Here we go, a few more rules. So the opposite obviously is true. We wanna go short and wait for it. You, need, you must let price confirm any entry. So that's what I mean by proof. You want it to move in the expected direction by a tick or two. Price must always confirm any of my indicators. And remember, there's always another trade. Cut your losses fast and let your profits run. I know you've heard that and it's hard to do, but take your losses fast. Professional traders um, are lucky if they make 45% correct trades. So that means 55% of their trades are wrong or losers. But if you have a two to one profit ratio, so you're wins, let's say, are $200 and your losses are $100, then you've got a two to one ratio and then the 45% works out. So let's look uh, at one and five minute charts correspondence. So there's two charts, a one minute and a five minute below it, showing you that we're, we're sideways, lots of congestion going on here because up above, we've got a sideways DMA. So that's, that's what I look at every day. Here we're gonna look real quick at an, an actual trading day that I recorded uh, two months ago, actually. It's the one minute E-mini. And you can see there on the matrix, it starts showing you a little bit of profit and you can watch that tick up, 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 up. There's other things that I use on the chart too that show me um, where to take profits. Let's see. There we go. Got a little video here. So you can watch it as it moves. That's kind of fun. <laughs> oh, look, Larry Williams, this was this is important. Larry Williams told me once, he's a good friend of mine. He said, it takes time to build profits. So you you can't just grab $12.50 every few seconds. You need to let time progress in order to build profits. Here, for instance, is the strong move up. We want to stay with that as long as it's above the DMA and climbing. And here it falls below, so we take our profits. Here again, we have uh, the sunny bars telling me what the volume is. I can see there's lots of volume on this down move, which tells me people are getting out and it's going to go back up. So just real quick, a couple of bars to look at. Here's the next day. And the next day it goes up again. 
And the next day we're out on that candle. See how it was above and dipped down below and turned red and watch. <clears throat> next candle, danger. And there are the next two days. So you can see that you wanna go long. It went red and below, green and above, long, 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 and there we're out. So I wanted to show you just a little bit more of the sunny bars. You can see the volume represented on the, by the width of the bars. Here, the same thing on a five minute chart. So you can see the width of the bars shows me the volume. And then this is the session bar, day sessions, like it's called, that paints the colors for me. So I know night session and day session, just at a glance. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to look down here at the time axis and figure out what time it is in my, my time zone. It's just right there in color. Oh, here we talk about attractors a little bit. They are support and resistance. Pennants formations are uh, attractors. Moving averages are attractors. Congestion areas are attractors. I draw them on my chart and then I set alerts. So when they're hit, I get an audible and a visual alert telling me to look at something. Here they are on a one minute chart. And you can see here I've drawn at the preponderance of price there and then down below, we, we hit it, we hit it, we hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And back here on the left, there's more, more attempts at hitting that line. So you can see that's a strong attractor. And once we hit it on the downside, we blast it through it. Again, I've got it here, 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 and here. All four of those lines, uh, points make another line for me. And when it drops below that, it moves fast. On a daily chart, here are some more attractors. Drawn on this price, we have a horizontal line. And when it breaks it, there it goes. Same idea back here, preponderance of price. So we're, I, I put these on everything and I watch them and it's amazing how they're hit over and over again later that day, the next day, Weeks later, you can see these things are, are uh, hmm, they do attract price to them. They're really strong indicators. It's just a matter of drawing horizontal lines. Anybody can do that. Here I've showed you my pennant indicator. So you can see the pennant is formed here. You can draw your own pennants. You can draw a box around congestion patterns. I use a four bar congestion. And when it breaks out of the top of this, uh, the red line on the pennant, I go long. If it breaks out to the bottom, I will go short. And here we have another pennant that forms. It's still going up. Now, this is the top of the box, top of the triangle. When it goes below that, we're short. So let's talk about them for a minute. Let's talk about where I think the current market's going. Here's the Dow from yesterday on uh, a daily chart. And you can see this blue line I've drawn here, that's 10% down. And you can see as of yesterday, we were trying to penetrate that line. Uh, let's look for just one second. We're down 442 points today. So it's not quite down to that, let's see, 32,648. No, it's got 200 points yet to go to get back down to this line. And that's the attractor that I drew because of the, the preponderance of price again. The lower one uh, is, I think, at 15% down, which is where we don't want it to go, but it certainly could, given today's political climate. This one is percent R. I can smooth anything with my, the mathematics that I use to smooth my dynamic moving average. And so here's Larry Williams percent R smooth. So you can see it's smoother than the standard percent R formula. Here we've got a divergence, price was going down, the indicator is moving up, which would often say that we should be moving up after that. This is the Dow on a monthly chart. You can see that that 10% down is not so bad when you look at it with a long-term view. So we've capitulated at the top, we're going down, but it, it just might bounce off of that and continue on up. 
That's the monthly Dow. Oh, here's a program that I, that I love. I, it's uh, available through eSignal. It's called Advanced Get. And you look at this. It plots one, two, three, four, five. You can see the Elliott waves right on your chart plotted out for you. It's a brilliant program. So that's through eSignal. It's not anything I do, but it's, it's interesting. And I thought you might like to see it. And don't forget, Trade Station Made Easy was my fifth book. And OOEL is a two volume book. There you go. The Programming Guide and the Reference Guide. Object Oriented Programming Made Easy for Easy Language. I do have a new podcast. So I'm going to finish early today, David. We can look at some charts if you want to. Uh, Sonny Harris Show on Spotify right there, or if you, it's too long to type and get it correct, www.moneymentor.com slash podcast.html. You can go there. Um, it, it's easier to find, I think. So we've recorded our first session where we introduce ourselves. And then on Saturday, we will have Tim Slater, originator of the first technical analysis computer software called uh, CompuTrack. And he put on for many years, he put on uh, trading seminars, like 20 of them, I think. So 20 years. And I spoke at a few of them. And uh, they were the best technical analysis seminars anywhere. All the famous gurus came and taught us about their methods and technologies. And it was absolutely fantastic. So we're going to look for a good time with Tim on Saturday. Where's my chat? Let's see if anybody has any questions. Do I have any charts on Bitcoin? I can sure give you a chart on Bitcoin. Let's see. At BTC. Hang on one second while I capture this. I wonder if I can paste it right there. No, I can't. So I can bring, snag it down to this chart right here. And there's the Bitcoin daily chart. And you can see the DMA is flat, 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 flat. So we're, get, we're entering a period of, or continuing a period of congestion. You can see the yellow dots from the low to the high and the low again. I'm thinking we're going to move up a little bit into this area. Uh, they tell me that Putin is spending his Bitcoin now. And uh, it's really hard to tell when the DMA is flat where it's going. But if I were to draw, I wonder if I can draw a horizontal line with this. It was filters coming. No. Anyway, right across here, you see that attractor? See that? It hits it and hits it and hits it. That would be putting it up about this level, 55,000 or so. So it could it could go up to there. It is currently at uh, 39,100, down 2,820 points for the day. Do my indicators work on NinjaTrader? No, I'm sorry, they don't. I don't program C languages and that's what NinjaTrader needs. So I don't. I don't have that, I'm afraid. Um, TC2000, same idea there. All these indicators work on trade station or multi charts. All right, let's minimize this and go back. I have a, just a couple more slides. So go ahead, ask me anything. And I'm gonna give you my information again. Oh, we have a special for people who have attended this web webinar. Now, I don't do this normally. I don't give discounts. It's a, the only time I give discounts is every year in October, I make a 50% discount available just for a few days. But um, other than that, I don't offer discounts. But here for today, for you guys, I have all of my products except the books, 30% off until the end of this month. So anybody that would like to get 30 to 30% 30 off, you won't see that again until October. Uh, go to moneymentor.com and click on 
products if you want to see the product charts of each of the products or uh, click on order form to order it. It does come with my support and I teach you how to use them. It, I usually spend 20 or 30 minutes with you on the phone and on Team Viewer, helping you set it up and getting used to it. I have lots and lots of indicators. Um, let me bring up Money Mentor here for just a second. Please be patient. MoneyMentor.com. Okay, so here's this screen. I have five monitors in case you're wondering. If you go to products and services, indicators and strategies, you, these are the indicators I offer. Lots and lots of stuff. And you can see that each of the each of them has an associated chart with them. Uh, what is that one? I have exit strategies. You can optimize them. So if you want to know if you should take profits or place drops or use trailing stops or profit targets or exit uncles, all of these exits and lots more are available in this optimizable indicator or strategy. So I, I've smoothed the ADX with my smoothing function. You can see the standard ADX on the bottom and the smooth one is much easier to read. Uh, I have a, a strategy and an indicator called all averages. So you can try all the averages in one place, optimize that, find which average works best. And you, here's how you make the changes. Those are the inputs. Oh, I have a little, <laughs> I have a little in indicator I call bean ticks. And it's not on right now because I'm busy talking, but it makes a bean sound when the market's going up and a bong sound when the market goes down. It updates with every tick of the market. Plays this little small uh, sound file. This is free. Here, let's see if I, oh, it's not, I have to download it. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, it's free. You could download it from my website, no problem. And to download things, let's see, let's go back up to the top. If you go to resources, downloads, and you can download a couple of free things there and uh, my user's manual and lots of stuff. You know, Money Mentor downloads. So Bing Ticks, I keep on my chart. I, I live with Bing Ticks because I, it's like hearing the floor. It's like when, back when they used to have a trading floor and you could hear when the volume got loud and the yelling got rapid, then you knew the market was moving. The same way with Bing Ticks. I also have one little one called buy and hold. So you can see if you had just bought and hold the Dow, how much money you would have made versus how much trading money you're making. Candlesticks, it'll tell you all the candlestick patterns right on your chart. So you don't have to try to interpret them. This is my current price, show me. So it'll it just puts a little ball, it turns red if it's down and blue if it's up. So you know what, and you can set those values too. So you know which direction the market's moving at a glance. Uh, this one's really useful, day open, high, low line. So you can see the high of that day was on the green, the open of the day was blue and the low of the day was red. And you'll see price move to those lines over and over and over again. Those are attractors too. Um, here's the one I showed you with the day sessions. There's my dynamic moving average and the strategy for the dynamic moving average. Here it is for radar screen. You can read the values right at the radar screen. This is one that I use on all my charts too. This is my DMAH, dynamic moving average histogram. And you can see this, it's gold goes up and it turns red, that's the time to short. Purple was still short right here. It turns green, that's time to go long. So I use that one as uh, advanced indicator. And here's one that I, oh, I have a, a newsletter, Sunny Side of the Street. If you go to Money Mentor and sign up as a member, I'll send you Sunny Side of the Street for free every Sunday night. It uses my indicators and my projections for the Dow, the ES, uh, gold, oil, a list of stocks, uh, Bitcoin, all kinds of things are free analysis. And one of the things it uses is this, you can see the direction, this is bearish, yes, but the direction is actually up. It was going down, now it's going up. So it turns green. Uh, this shows you the dynamic moving 
average crossovers. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, there's the pendants indicator. So you, you can get that. And this one is the what is true indicator. You want to know where the ideal trades are. That's the PHW indicator. Let's go back to the presentation for a second. So moneymentor.com, 30% off till the 31st. So thank you to everyone who attended. Remember that I'm always happy to accept phone calls. Here's my phone, this is my cell phone. Call me during California hours though. I don't usually answer the phone at 6 a.m., which would be nine o'clock East Coast. And that's it in a nutshell. For more information, for consulting or tutoring, give me a call or you can Skype me or send me a fax or email me. Anytime today, you can email me. So please visit moneymentor.com. And are there any more questions? What do you see with symbol EXC? Let's see. I don't even know what is EXC. EXC. Hang on just a minute. I'll grab that chart. And EXC looks like it, see it went up and touched the sunny band on a blue candle turned red and came down within it. So that looks to me like it's going short. The DMAH has red lines over here. That echoes the short. But this indicator I call who's on top tells me that gold is still on top all this time. So I would be looking for it to come right down. If you can see my mouse right down to there, it's the midline. And then bounce again. I don't know. Who is EXC? I don't know. So that, unless it penetrates the midline, which it's kind of gotten flat right here. So chances are it's going to hit that midline and bounce. But if it goes below that, you know, obviously you stay short. All right. Thank you very much, David, Anka. Appreciate it.